Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's Healing Minute from the virtual Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. It's two days to Harry's birthday. On Sunday, the 29th of May, he'll be 129 years old, still as strong in spirit as he ever was, I'm sure. I'm going to turn the music down a little while I chat to you. Healing blessings wherever you are, whether you're watching live or on catch-up. Please remember our motto, wherever you are, we are here for you. And I'm John, speaking to you today from sunny Hillingdon, West London. The music you're listening to is by Tim Wheater, a friend of the sanctuary, and the CD entitled Golden Light, and the track is Healing. This session includes an opportunity for each of us to send healing to the people and animals we know are in need. We think particularly at this time of our dear Doreen, who had a hip operation on Wednesday, Rowena who is undergoing treatment, and a personal one to my friend Linda, who is suffering at this time. The picture you see before you is by a lady named Kim Bergeron. I don't know her, but it was attached to a rather wonderful post on the internet through Facebook on the Matthew Manning Healing Hub, which I'm going to read to you later because I thought it was brilliant. But I, I'm going to tell you a little story before we start the Healing Minute, which I only heard this morning from my wife. One of our cousins, sorry, nieces, lives in Newquay in Cornwall, and every night she gets a rat-a-tat-tat on her front door on the letterbox. And it's a badger, often accompanied by his wife and sometimes their children. And they come looking for food. And the one thing that badgers cannot resist and adore is peanut butter. So most nights, Brock and his family get peanut butter sandwiches, sometimes nuts and seeds, but every night at the same time, they rat-a-tat on the letterbox. So I'm now going to turn the music off and we'll prepare for the healing minute proper. So now as we relax, in preparation, please close your eyes, if it's safe to do so, and in your mind, take yourself off to your own personal sanctuary, somewhere that you feel perfectly safe, totally at ease, and completely peaceful. Take a deep breath and inhale the healing energy and allow it to flow through your body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. As you breathe out, let go of all your personal stresses and any dis-ease in your daily life. We now attune so that we're linked to the universal love and we give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As our crown chakra opens, we visualise a column of pure white light filling our body. Then feel the balance and harmony within our body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of our feet and our base chakra. We feel our connection to the universal source of pure, unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing, protective love of Mother Earth. As we say to ourselves the Harry Edwards prayer, as I say, bearing in mind on Sunday it's his birthday, May I be thankful for all the blessings I already have. Grant me relief from pain and sickness. Protect me from all ills and grant me good health in the days to come. Remove all causes of imperfection and bring your healing ministers close to me. 
that I may be conscious of their presence and so receive guidance and inspiration. Grant me courage and fortitude to overcome all adversity. Let me be conscious of your strength in all times of need. Grant me confidence to overcome my fears and not anticipate harm. Teach me how to live rightly in your sight, to do only that which is right and true. I pray that good guidance and right influencing will inspire all your peoples to be as brothers, one to the other, and that peace shall endure for all time. Amen. And now for the great invocation, where our attunement is linked to all of those around the world who have healing thoughts at this time, and we create this matrix of healing, love and energy, and gosh, don't we need it at this time. So many things have come out of the COVID epidemic, not to mention other dreadful things going on at the moment, that help and he healing and love is required across the whole globe. So the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills for the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. We ask now that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder, or healing books with all of us, that they may receive healing for their highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends and the people who have requested distant healing. May they be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. Let us take a minute to send out that love. Thank you and our thanks and blessings for your help here today and to our friends in spirit. I'm going to do parish notices first and then a couple of readings. Our dear Tara, who has just taken on the duty of Healing Minute, while Doreen is getting better, is doing a gong bath at the sanctuary this morning. So if you rush, it's uh, £23. But it starts, I don't know at what time, but it's on today. On Saturday the 9th of July, we have our summer fair. And all are welcome as usual. There will be healings, not full ones, just uh, taster sessions. And lots of stalls and the wonderful sausage rolls and cakes. 
I must bring to your notice the Bluebells Cancer Support Unit, which is currently run by Stephanie, our lovely Stephanie, who did Healing Minute for a while. And that's the first and third Thursday of every month. And it's between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. in the Bluebells room at the sanctuary. No charge, although donations, of course, are always welcome. All of the talks we do are usually on Zoom and or Facebook or YouTube. They're all over the place. So what have I got to read to you today? Some words of wisdom. Well, the first thing is from Helen Steiner Rice, and it's in her book, Daily Reflections. And it said, it's titled, Nothing Really Ever Dies. And the first little bit is a quotation from the Bible from 2 Corinthians 4, 16, 18. So we do not lose heart, though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed every day. We look not to the things that we are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. And this is Helen Steiner Rice's poem that goes with that. Nothing really ever dies that is not born anew. The miracles of nature all tell us this is true. The flowers sleeping peacefully beneath the winter snow awaken from their icy graves when spring winds start to blow. And little brooks and singing streams, ice-bound beneath the snow, begin to bubble merrily beneath the sun's warm glow. And all around, on every side, new life and joy appear to tell us nothing ever dies and we should have no fear. For death is just a detour along life's wending way that leads God's chosen children to a bright and glorious day. On that theme of renewal or life and death, this is a piece that I extracted from Facebook, as I say, it was posted on Matthew Manning's Healing Hub by a lady by the name of Jill. We don't know who the author is, but Jill says, I love this perspective. What are your thoughts? This so explains the afterlife. Let us look at the picture we see on the screen and imagine. In a mother's womb, there are two babies. One asks the other, do you believe in life after delivery? The other replied, why of course, there has to be something after delivery. Maybe we're here to prepare ourselves for what we will be later. Nonsense, said the first. There is no life after delivery. What kind of life would that be? The second said, I don't know, but there will be more light than here. Maybe we will walk with our legs and eat with our mouths. Maybe we will have other senses that we, can, we can't understand now. The first replied, that's absurd. Walking is impossible and eating with our mouths ridiculous. The umbilical cord supplies nutrition and everything we need. But the umbilical cord is so short. Life after delivery is to be logically excluded. The second insisted, well, I think there's something that, and maybe it's different than it is in here. Maybe we won't need that physical cord anymore. The first replied, nonsense. And moreover, if there is life, then why has no one ever come back from there? Delivery is the end of life. And in the after delivery, there is nothing but darkness and silence and oblivion. It takes us nowhere. I don't know, said the second, but certainly we will meet Mother and she will take care of us. The first replied, Mother, you will actually believe in Mother? That's laughable. If Mother exists, then where is she now? The second said, she is all around us. We are surrounded by her. We are of her. It is in her that we live. Without her, this world would not and could not exist. Said the first, well, I don't see her, 
so it's only logical that she doesn't exist. To which the second replied, Sometimes when you're in silence and you focus and listen, you can perceive her presence and you can hear her loving voice calling down from above. <laughs> Maybe this was one of the best explanations of the concept of God. I found it enlightening and absolutely wonderful. So on that little note, I'm going to say a little farewell. I'm going to play a tune, which is a nod to our lovely friends Alan and Tracy, because in their garden in Spain there is a metallic sculpture of Don Quixote, the man who fought windmills and is the subject of Don Cervantes' novel of the same name. But when they made a movie of it, called The Man of La Mancha. They made it a musical, sorry, they made it a musical. And this song is played in it, and I rather love it. So on the note of sending you all love and healing and wishes for a beautiful weekend, this is sung by Leslie Garrett, and it's The Impossible Dream. Thank you all and have a lovely weekend.